Okay, so <laughs> some some somebody said uh, I don't understand why you know you're attacking this film so hard. Look, if I love something, I am going to shout it from the rooftops. I'm going to make videos gushing over it like three, four a day. For people who are familiar with this channel, they know exactly how I am. When I watched Across the Spider-Verse, that movie completely blew my mind that I only wanted to talk about it for an entire week. I dove into like every single detail or every single thing that I hyper-focused on when I was watching the film. For The Flash, it's the exact same thing, but there's a lot more to critique in this film. Like I said, if you've been a part of this channel for like a really, really long time, I have done nothing but talk about DC TV shows, DC movies, just across the board and the missteps and the bad decision makings that they've essentially been making when they really should be winning this war because while marvel in my opinion currently is is being forced to play it safe dc really has a chance to like stretch out and and play it a little bit reckless give people stories that they're not really used to and i think the flash was a chance to tell that story where you have a ver like who wouldn't connect with barry where he's running into the past to save his mom you'd instantaneously connect with that but at the exact same time you watch him realize the destruction that's absolutely happening around him and when you s you see that and you realize that he has to make the horrible choice to sacrifice his mother to save and correct the universe there's good storytelling that's there there's just bad decisions in the way of that storytelling that sometimes pull you out and force you to look up at the screen and go what the fuck is this shit and one of those individuals is the dark flash so i don't think this movie needed the dark flash I think the better story was already being told. You already got me invested in the older Barry. And as the movie progressed, I became invested and attached to the younger Barry. And I liked that I enjoyed both of these characters for completely different reasons, where this obnoxious and loud character suddenly realizes just how dire the stakes are and is being forced to mature in a time of war whereas the older barry has already seen war and he's already seen chaos and he's basically trying his hardest to save what he's currently gained without losing all the things that all the things and people that he had in the past and there is a great story being told with younger Barry where he's not learning the lessons that older Barry has already learned why because he's rash he's hot-headed he's pig-headed he's not paying attention to the subtle details there I made this comment in the review where he's very much a lot like uh, Atreus from the first God of War game where once Atreus realized that he was a god and he had the powers of a god he was like man I'm going the fuck I want <laughs> like i'm a god you can't tell me what to do like what you what, what are you what are you but a mortal to someone who can change the timeline and reshape reality and i like that in the middle of the fight barry's looking around the battlefield watching soldiers get slaughtered watching batman just die realizing that supergirl is gone and he's like fuck i did this i caused all of this chaos all because I ran back in time in an attempt to save my mother. And while he's contemplating that, the younger version of him is trying to save Sasha Callie's Supergirl because he has a crush on her. And he fails. He finds her dead. And he runs back to Barry. And, his, and the first response that pops into his mind is, we can reset the timeline. And it's him running off and the older Barry screaming for him to stop because he realizes that that isn't the answer but still choosing to run with him in hopes that he would learn that lesson, in hopes that he would come out, fail, and realizing that attempting to reshape reality to basically fit 
what you want is never going to work because reality has a way of biting you in the ass, they run into the past. Barry changes things. He saves Batman from, from attacking the ship. He runs off to save Supergirl. He fails again. When he fails again, he runs back into time again and attempts to change it again. And Barry is trying to stop him because he's realizing the destruction that he's causing. He's like, every single time I attempt to reshape everything, just on my first attempt to reshape everything, I doom the world. Watching my younger self run out, come back in, run out, come back in, changing reality over and over and over and over again. He's watching the pillars of reality fall, but he was the one that knocked down the first pillar. And I, that story right there is great because you have the younger version of him who's not giving up, but is getting driven to the point of madness that he has to save Supergirl. Everything that he's doing is to save this girl. He can't let her die because she's a hero. And, and what kind of person would he be if he allowed a hero to die? And not only is he losing hope at the fact that he can't save her, he's also just like losing his mind and being pissed off that his older version isn't helping him in any way, shape or form. That is the struggle. It's a struggle between both of these two characters. It's a struggle between the older warrior who realizes all the death and destruction he's causing is because of one decision that he made and the younger warrior who's, who's driving himself crazy, trying to fix all of his mistakes and not learning the lesson that sometimes you just have to live with your failure. That's a good story. But doing the whole bootstrap paradox and bringing in the, the, the dark flash to knock him into that timeline, you didn't need any of that. You could have done what the TV show did. Barry was running to the future. He runs into a temporal wall. He can't figure out why the wall is there. He tries again. He bumps into the wall and he realizes that something happens in this time. And at first he thinks it's because, you know, maybe it's because my younger self doesn't have superpowers yet. So he aids in the superpowers. Later on, you reveal that what he ran into was the end of this timeline. Zod destroys the entire planet, changes the whole timeline. There's no future buried. There's nothing for him to return to that he was attempting to return to early on, but this is where everything essentially died. He learns that lesson towards the end of the film that his younger self does not want to basically give into. That's the direction that you should have went in. You should have leaned more on the great storytelling and the great acting that was coming out of all your actors. Ezra Miller was acting his ass off. So was Sasha Kelly. So was Michael Keaton. Relied on those three core actors to basically carry this film. And I feel as though you'd have definitely elevated it. But what did what did Dark Flash do? He bull rushed, he bull tackled Barry into the timeline so that he could create himself. Okay, bootstrap paradox, that's fine. But then he shows up, traps Barry for three seconds, stabs his younger self in the back, deletes himself from the timeline, and that's it. Never an actual threat. And I feel as though if you're not going to utilize something to the point that it's this overarching villain slash threat that the hero has to deal with, it doesn't have to be in the film. You could take that out and then use the characters that you have to tell a, a far better story. But hey, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just a hater. <laughs> Apparently, I'm just a guy who hates DC and just, you know, doesn't want them to succeed and give me the fantastic stories that I've been watching and reading since I was like 13 years old. But let me know what you think. Comment down below and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.